it. So Scott Harvey, Harvey Engineering, has given me the specifications on my footings. That's good, now I can start to build. He has calculated that I need a footing four feet wide, 12 inches thick, two mats of rebar, and you're gonna see me set the edge form, the face form, for the outside edge of this footing. The backside is gonna be formed by the bank. Don't have to set a form back there. Now I could, but then look what that does. That creates a situation where I have to be able to strip a form and then I have a little void right there that is not 100% in contact with the bank. So I'm just gonna let the bank restrain the concrete here on the, on the uphill side. This footing needs to be 12 inches thick. The inspector will object if the top of my form is not 12 inches above the dirt. So I've just verified that this elevation has clearance everywhere. I don't want to pour on this grade because in some places we're an inch and a half or two inches low. In some places we're right up to it. I want to make up that difference with crushed rock. So knowing that I am high everywhere, I will simply move my instrument, my eye, 12 inches. I'm going to go 12 and a half, 13. Let's go 13, down the rod which translates to the bottom of this rod coming up to the height that I want the top of my concrete to be. We're gonna call that top of footing. On plans, that's indicated as T-O-F. And then I loosen up my rod eye, my sensor, and I slide it down until it is registering at that mark. Now I can walk around anywhere I want where this wall's gonna happen, and know that that distance right there, now I, I'm portable. I can move back and forth across this expanse, use this to set my grade. And I will know that it's far enough above this rough grade that I can bring in a little three-quarter minus, sprinkle it in on the rough grade, level it out, grade it, compact it, and have a perfectly, relatively perfectly uniform 12-inch thick footing that the Douglas County Building Inspector will just be so pleased to see. I've established this as four foot plus from the average cut back there because the footing needs to be four foot wide. Now I want the grade. Top of footing. That's a top of footing elevation. That's the right distance from the bank. Now I'm gonna go down to where the wall is gonna bend, which is a completely arbitrary location. This wall is only holding dirt. It's not holding a structure. So I have the latitude to put these things wherever I want. The line stake goes in the mud. That is, the concrete is here, the form will be here. The line stake occurs on the mud side so the form can run by the stake. Right there. There's two. Four foot four. I think we're going to put another bend in here. I think that's just too much concrete to throw away. So it's kind of an interesting calculation. Why would I concern myself with putting an extra bend in this footing? It's to save concrete. I mean, if I'm a foot too wide, over call out on the plans, every 27 feet is a yard of concrete. That's uh, 110 bucks. So it's a cost benefit analysis of how much labor does it cost to save the $110 in concrete. If I, was, if I had taken this job on a bid basis and I had a crew working, I would be, do I want those guys to stop their production and fight that? Well, maybe, but maybe not for half a yard. But since it's only my time, yeah, I'm gonna crowd that back and save the concrete. Yeah, that's the spot. Let's get the grade right. It is. So you remember how I mentioned that the line stake is on the mud side of the board? See that? The line stake is inside of the string. 
so this board can run by the line stake without running into it. This stake is holding the board up, so it's on the outside, that's obvious. Here's what's not so obvious. You know, I can pick this up and try to hold it with my foot and nail it to grade. You can do it all day long. But a slick thing is to bring it up past the grade and then drive it down. You can get it right to the grade without any question about holding and nailing and settling it on down. It doesn't have to be in very hard because all this stake is doing is keeping the form from moving up and down. So with a 12 inch face you got a lot of pressure. The vertical stakes will not withstand it. You'll get bows, you'll get blowouts, so you put kickers on here. A kicker is a stake put in at about a 45 degree angle back to the ground to provide resistance to that overturning moment. You lay it up against a vertical, <clears throat> you don't put it out in the middle because then when you're rodding the concrete you've got to jump around a brace and jump around a, a vert. So you put them right up against your verticals. They don't have to go in a long ways, but they have to go in until a hole lines up with the edge of your board. Underpinning is the floor material that goes below the initial board which sets the grade, that you put in there just to reduce leakage and spillage and control how much concrete you actually use on the project. We're going to underpin this with a 2x4. 